Welcome to Beat Source Tech. My name is Mojax, and today we're looking at lighting, and in particular, something which doesn't get talked about very often, and that is the idea that mobile DJs in particular are going and buying their light fixtures directly from Chinese companies, whether that will be through AliExpress or through the website of the company themselves or via eBay. There are lots of ways to do that, and just no one seems to really talk about it all that much. So I wanted to investigate further. I thought what I would do is choose a company in China who come recommended by some people that I respect. And in this case, that is both lighting. I've been looking at some of their wireless uplights. So let's get to it. Buying lighting directly from China can be quite a controversial subject. I started to become interested in the topic in 2020 when I began learning DMX and working with SoundSwitch, and since then I've experimented with a few different types of fixtures, many of which have come from brands which you won't find in a typical DJ store. There are lots of DJs out there who will insist on buying nothing but the big name brands in the field, like ADJ and Chauvet, and there's nothing wrong with that position. They are companies with a proven track record for quality products. But while doing my research, I started to pay more attention to the types of fixtures installed at the venues I play at and visit. And what I realized is this. Many professional installers don't give two hoots about brand names. I've seen so many generic LED PARs, clones of the clay Paky Sharpie moving heads, washes, and other fixtures in use week in week out at different venues seemingly without issue for installers price to performance ratio appears to be paramount and that makes a lot of sense as i see it there are three tiers of dj lighting supplier those big brands who often have unique and innovative products which you can't find elsewhere but which are still generally made in china you'll usually pay a premium for those but as i say that's preferable to many djs as they're more comfortable going with a name they know then, in every territory around the world, there are the brands which will largely source existing designs from Chinese factories on an OEM basis, often adding their own branding and packaging, and possibly customizing some functions along the way. So you might see very similar fixtures from a variety of companies in, say, the US and Europe, many of which are the house brands for big retailers. They're usually a bit cheaper than the really big names, and you get the advantages of working with a local distributor, which makes delivery and warranty issues much easier to deal with, and the prices are generally quite consistent, as currency fluctuations are built into the price. And finally, you can order directly from companies in China themselves. The biggest advantage they have is, naturally, price, as you're cutting out any middlemen in the transaction. There are some potential downsides, though, which I will be clear about. Firstly, there are a lot of companies offering very similar, often apparently identical products, and it's hard to know which are really well made and which might just appear to be. Shopping around on AliExpress and the like, it's almost impossible to discern which companies are trustworthy and which aren't. There are just too many of them. And electrical safety must always be a concern to every DJ. Secondly, assuming you find a good supplier, if you have a warranty issue, you are dealing with a company on a different continent. Good luck getting spare parts shipped overnight to you before a big event. And thirdly, prices do fluctuate quite a lot. If you buy one set of fixtures and then try to buy another set six months later, the price may have dropped or it may have risen. You're dealing with fluctuating currencies and shipping costs. Plus, there is the potential for import duties and the like, although I will say that's not been an issue for me with anything yet. To start my journey into this world, I began by slowly buying up a clutch of mini moving heads. Some are branded U-King, some aren't. They've all come from different suppliers on Amazon and eBay, and so far, they've done the job pretty well. I'll do a dedicated video about those later. But I really wanted to try some wireless uplights directly from China, as they're so often a real value-add product for mobile DJs, and when you need them in quantity, the price of your investment gets real high real quick. But how to choose a good supplier? Well, there are two well-known mobile DJs on YouTube whose opinions I definitely respect, Joe Bunn and Rick Webb, and they have both sung the praises of a company called Both Lighting, based in Shenzhen. They each have a ton of their uplights and seem to have nothing really bad to say about the company at all. So I reached out to both lighting and immediately found the experience to be simple and straightforward. You'll be dealing with a woman called Cheryl who writes in excellent English and will answer all of your questions promptly and in a friendly fashion. This was a big tick for me straight away. Dealing with a language barrier can always make for difficult transactions and my grasp of Mandarin is non-existent. I knew that I wanted wireless uplights and I asked Cheryl to send me their most popular model for review and she said that is the smart DJ. 
TJS6. They sell those in various packages, in a bag with 4 fixtures and in charging flight cases with 6, 8 or 10 fixtures. I ended up with a case containing 6. It took the best part of a month to arrive here in the UK. That could be faster or slower for you and that shipping time is just something you'll have to prepare for. Ultimately, you're importing products directly from another country, shipping is a mess globally right now and that's the reality of the situation. So let's talk about the fixtures themselves. What I was pleased about on first examining the S6s is that whilst they look like a lot of other uplights out there, they don't appear to be a straight clone of anyone else's design. As far as I can find, there is no major or even second tier brand who offer this exact light, and so that's a very good thing. The S6s contain 6 18 watt hex LEDs, meaning each diode offers red, green, blue, white, amber and UV, which can all be mixed together to offer millions of potential colours. The colour mixing is very smooth and the clarity of the 6 main colours is superb. There is minimal colour fringing at the edge of the beam when mixing colours too. Brightness is excellent, comfortably exceeding the 12 watt LEDs on the uplights I was using previously. The beam angle is 25 degrees which sits in the middle of the pack for an uplight. If you prefer an even tighter throw then they offer the S4 with 4 LEDs which have a 15 degree beam angle. When used as intended to highlight parts of a room or architectural features, the S6s look fantastic. Construction is absolutely on point. The full metal bodies are available in two hard wearing finishes, a stealthy matte black or a gloss white for you wedding DJs who want that all white everything look. They have a built in carry handle and a kickstand to adjust the angle of the light a few degrees if you need that. The kickstand feels a little clunky but it does the job just fine. There's also a threaded port to connect them to things like trussing. They weigh in at around 2.4 kilograms, which is a little over 5 pounds, so they aren't terribly heavy until you put a bunch of them in a case. More on that later. Although they don't feature the kind of heatsink body design found on some similar fixtures, cooling is very good and they don't get especially warm, whether in use or when charging. Underneath you find the power switch, standard 3-pin DMX sockets for input and pass-through, and the same thing applies for power. It seems you can spec the S6s with either IEC or Powercon connectors, and my review set came with Powercon. Whilst that is a very solid and professional connector which locks in place, it's worth keeping in mind that Powercon doesn't have braking capacity, so shouldn't really be connected or disconnected under load. It's not quite as simple as an IEC connector in that regard. Plus, I don't have Powercon on any other hardware, so it's not as easy to just grab any old cable out of my stash. Both lighting do provide an excellent set of Powercon cables with the fixtures though. I'm honestly not sure which option I would prefer if I was given the choice. One thing the S6s are not is waterproof, they don't have an IP rating. They do come supplied with these cute little rain jackets, so a little outdoor use is not beyond their capabilities, but if you do a lot of outdoor events in inclement weather, you're better off looking for some IP rated models instead. Where the S6 truly shines, in my opinion, is when it comes to control. To start with, there are none of your basic segmented displays here. These fixtures feature a full colour LCD screen. It's easy to navigate using the buttons below it, and it exposes the absolute plethora of control methods on offer. First of all, you have DMX. There's a choice of 6 or 10 channel modes, and the DMX worked great for me with sound switch, record box lighting, and the Wolfmix W1 that I reviewed recently. This can be connected and daisy chained through DMX cables or used wirelessly using the standard 2.4 GHz wireless DMX protocol with up to 7 groups. Wireless range is great, and with clear line of sight, you should be able to place them around very large rooms indeed. Certainly, I've not played in a space yet where I could exceed the distance they cover. As with most 2.4 GHz tech, put a wall or two in the way and things fall apart very quickly, but that's in no way unique to these lights. And you do have the little pop-out antennas on the side if you do need a boost, which I haven't in my testing. The wireless DMX indicator LED is definitely bright and flashes constantly when in use, which I saw led Rick Webb to put tape over his, but that's a standard thing in the lighting industry and so I won't complain about it. An option to turn it off would be cool though. One note here, the S6s don't have a traditional master-slave setting on them. This can be a little confusing at first, but basically you need to power up the first light in the chain before the others, so it starts sending data out to the other fixtures when you switch those on. This has caught me out during setup a few times, but it's nothing you can't get used to. You can set up the fixture manually using the display, mixing custom colours or choosing presets, as well as selecting auto fade, change and strobe modes at the speed of your choice. There are also a bunch of sound active modes for you to use, which seem to respond very nicely to input. I'm pleased to report that one of those does not include strobing, so if you're in a situation where strobes are inappropriate, you can use these just fine. 
Each fixture also comes supplied with an IR remote and that works well. The sensor is on the back of the light and it does the job fine with a lot of functions squeezed into a small remote. The remote will work with multiple fixtures at once as long as they can see it. What's even more impressive though is the both lighting app which is available on Android and iOS. I tested the iOS version and it is remarkably good, offering a full suite of colour controls, presets and more. To connect the app you enable Wi-Fi on one fixture, connect your phone to that and then that light will feed the control data to the others via the 2.4 gigahertz wireless so only one fixture needs wi-fi enabled this control method is great it's reliable responsive and allows a really deep amount of customizing options for your light show so with control covered now let's move on to battery life which is obviously really important for wireless fixtures like these the s6s feature 8800 milliamp hour lithium batteries which take around four to five hours from my testing to fully charge as for battery life that's going to vary wildly according to how you use the lights running a single static color is obviously ideal for battery life and after four months of use i just got a solid 14 hours out of a fixture as i write this with wireless dmx turned on if you're running custom colours or fades, that life may be shorter, and doing things like running shows with DMX, that will have an impact too. So whilst there's no definitive answer to how long the batteries will last, I can say with confidence that they should get you through a typical event of 6-8 to eight hours without any issue at all. I've never had one die during a gig, and the battery life doesn't seem to have depreciated over time. If you really get stuck or forget to charge them, they can run off wall power again and be daisy chained, which is really good, and I do appreciate the little touches like being able to have the screen turn off automatically which will help with eking out the maximum life from the battery one thing to note on the battery display itself it really can't be trusted i've seen a suggestion in a comment on another video that it's displaying the voltage not the actual battery life left as you'd expect on a phone or something so don't rely on looking at that number to judge how much time you have available i'd also prefer a more visible charging indicator there's a small red led inside the lights when they're charging but that's quite hard to see in daylight or in a brightly lit room we move on to the charging case and I have to say I'm impressed with that as well. It's a really solid piece in the ATA style with really big sturdy casters, two of which are locking. There are indents in the top to allow the cases to be stacked safely in storage or in transit. For charging, the case has an IEC input on the side with a power switch and both lighting will supply the case with appropriate power sockets for your country. In my case, they were international ones. The case can look a little messy when all the cables are hooked up unless you go super hard on cable management but in terms of functionality it all works very nicely and it's super easy to charge all of your fixtures at once the main thing to consider about the case is that when fully loaded with six fixtures it weighs a lot i'm pretty sure that lifting one with 10 lights in it would have to be a two-person job so that's something to think about if you're a solo operator or you don't have a vehicle which you can roll things in or out of ultimately you'll know what will work for your own situation in my case i always transfer the fixtures out to bags instead and have only used the flight case for charging and storage but you may be already carting around a ton of heavy items so transfer Transporting the case might fit your workflow better. Finally, I need to talk price, which will be the deciding factor for most when looking at these lights. What's interesting is that since I began the process of making this review, both lighting now have a website, djnowlighting.com, which offers their products from both US and EU warehouses, as well as direct from China. So keep in mind that the prices will vary according to where they ship from and over time. But at the time of making this video, a case of six will run you under 1,000 US dollars, an eight pack around 1,200, and a 10 pack under $1,500. Compared with other options out there, that is very affordable indeed, which is kind of the point of the whole exercise, but just being cheap without providing good quality won't cut it, and I'm happy to say that the both lights deliver on all those fronts. So there you go, my thoughts on the S6 uplights from both lighting. This is a solid product, right? It's not the most premium thing you're ever going to see, but that's what you pay the big bucks for with the big brands, right? You pay for that premium. These are a workhorse. They will do what they're supposed to do for you very well. I've had these now for four months and I've used them loads here in the lab and I've taken them out to gigs. I've put in a lot of hours with these lights and not one of the six has given me any issues at any point. So from that point of view, you know, quality wise, I'm recommending them. Now, if you buy dozens and dozens like Joe Bunn, perhaps you're going to get the odd lemon here or there. But I guarantee if you bought dozens and dozens of premium ones, you'd probably end up with that as well. So I don't think that's really an issue. And crucially, with both lighting, you get good customer service. They will look after you and they will respond to you and they will do what they say they're going to do. 
And that's just so important when you're dealing with any company. Like I can co-sign now along with Joe and with Rick, I can co-sign both lighting very happily. What I can't do is co-sign every random Chinese company on AliExpress or eBay who is going to sell you lighting because I don't know whether their products are of equivalent quality. I don't know whether they're just going to take your money and run. I don't know. There might be lots of other good ones out there, but I don't know that. I do know that both lighting will deliver a quality product at a very low price and they've got good customer service as well. I would happily myself buy products from both lighting now at this point. Having used these, 100% I'd be comfortable shopping there. Now, let us know down in the comments below. Have you bought lighting directly from China, whether that's through a company themselves or through AliExpress or something? What have your experiences been? Have they been good or bad? I want to hear the positives and the negatives. Or are you one of these DJs who will only ever buy name brands and, and that's you and you're happy with that? And as I say, I respect that position, but I'd love to hear about that down in the comments below. Thank you for watching this episode of Beat Source Tech. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give the video a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel and you turn on notifications to make sure you don't miss any future videos. I'll see you soon. <laughs>